Hello, and welcome to NTD News Today. Kevin Hogan here. Let's take a look at our top stories. The CDC director and a fact checker refute a claim by a Supreme Court justice. The justice claimed over 100,000 children are in serious condition over COVID-19. A large fire spread smoke through a 19-floor building in the Bronx. City officials say at least 19 people are dead, including nine children. And Novak Djokovic is back in practice after winning an appeal to stay in Australia, marking another twist in the tennis star's vaccination exemption and his bid for a record 21st Grand Slam win at the Australian Open. A large fire started by a malfunctioning space heater spread smoke through a 19-floor building in the Bronx on Sunday. City officials say at least 19 people were killed, including nine children, and dozens were injured. NTD's Andrew Thomas reports. A witness to a massive fire in the Bronx watched the tragedy unfold from her window. She saw a baby rescued and a man on a stretcher fighting for his life. No, he got a baby in his hands. The baby is wrapped up. But he got a baby, saved the baby, yay! Oh man, look at this little baby, bundled up and everything. New York City Mayor Eric Adams confirmed at least 19 people have died from the blaze. The fire broke out around 11 a.m. in the affordable housing complex. Earlier on Sunday, officials said 32 people had been hospitalized with life-threatening injuries. Some 60 people were injured in total. She needs to get out. She's getting all that smoke. She got her head out the window. She's waving like they they only on this floor, the second floor. I don't know who's going to get her from that floor. This is a big fire. It went from second, third floor to like 10th, 11th floor. The fire itself started in an apartment that spanned the second and third floors of the building and only made it to the hall, officials said. But smoke still spread to every floor of the building and victims suffered from significant smoke inhalation. Oh, they got somebody, they got two ladders going. They got kids coming out. They saving them. They on the ladder going down. They saving the kids, my niece. They not jumping. They, they, are, they good. Look at all these people coming out the house, off the ladder, off the other window. Fire marshals determined the fire started in a portable electric heater in the apartment's bedroom. The tragedy is likely to raise questions on safety standards in low-income city housing. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. We send our condolences to the families and communities affected by this tragedy. The CDC and a fact checker say that Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor was wrong. That involves her claim that over 100,000 children are in serious condition because of COVID-19. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky says the real number is about 30 times less. Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor claimed that 100,000 children are hospitalized or seriously ill with COVID-19. That was an argument she made before the court on January 7th while hearing lawsuits against the Biden administration's vaccine mandate for private employers. But during an interview with Fox News Sunday, CDC Director Dr. Wachelle Walensky disputed that claim. She said there were only about 3,500 children in the hospital who have COVID-19. And in fact, what I will say is, while pediatric hospitalizations are rising, they're still about 15-fold less than hospitalizations of our older age age demographics. The director did not say how many children are on ventilators, but she said the highest risk of children being on ventilators is if they are unvaccinated. Furthermore, fact-checker PolitiFact disputed the claim by Sotomayor. It was a rare fact-check of a justice who former President Obama appointed, and some Republican lawmakers accused her of spreading misinformation. PolitiFact said children have the lowest hospitalization and death rates among all age groups, and it said people older than 70 are considered the most vulnerable. Meanwhile, in California, the state's Department of Public Health issued new guidance. It allows health care workers to enable their employees to keep working, even if they have COVID-19, but they can't be showing any symptoms. The department calls this a temporary flexibility. It says it's to help hospitals respond to an unprecedented surge in cases and staffing shortages. But the department said hospitals must employ this as a last resort only, and it said the COVID-positive workers are only to interact with COVID-positive patients to the extent that it's possible. Asymptomatic health workers in the state do not have to quarantine before coming back to work. 
And in the e-commerce industry, Amazon is making changes to its paid leave for employees. It follows the CDC's reduction in quarantine time for asymptomatic cases. Now, U.S. Amazon employees will only have 40 hours of paid leave to quarantine with COVID-19, before the company allowed 10 days of paid leave for self-isolation. The company made the announcement on Friday, and it is effective immediately. It does not depend on vaccination status. To get the leave, employees must show a positive test result. Amazon says those who are still sick after one week will have other leave options available to them. Domestic airlines canceled more than 1,300 flights Sunday due to COVID. Tens of thousands of flights have been canceled since Christmas when the Omicron variant tightened its grip. The rapidly spreading infection has also impacted the cruise industry. So far, airlines have canceled more than 700 flights for Monday. That number does not include those that have been delayed. Congressman Jim Jordan says he will not cooperate with the committee investigating last year's Capitol breach. The panel asked him to disclose conversations he had with Trump on the day of the Capitol breach. Jordan sent a letter to the committee chairman asking the request is un- saying the request is unreasonable and violates constitutional principles. He said it would serve to further erode legislative norms. The panel requested an interview with Jordan last month. Jordan was one of Trump's main defenders during his two impeachment trials. Both times, Trump was acquitted by the Senate. House Republicans previously nominated Jordan to the committee investigating the Capitol breach, but House Speaker Nancy Pelosi rejected the choice. She says it's because Jordan believes there was election fraud in the 2020 presidential election. Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson announced in an email that he is running for re-election. By seeking a third term in office, Johnson is setting the stage for a tough campaign that could determine control of the U.S. Senate. The 66-year-old Republican's decision comes despite having previously said he would retire at the current term after the current term ends. Wisconsin is considered to be among the six Senate seats most likely to flip in 2022. A crowded field of challengers is vying for the Democratic nomination, including Wisconsin's lieutenant governor and the state's treasurer. Johnson's decision comes just one day after Senate Minority Whip John Thune announced he is also seeking re-election, making him the last incumbent Republican to do so. Residents in Centralia, Washington, are assessing damage to their homes after floods hit parts of the northwestern United States following several days of heavy rain. It was pretty intense because we haven't really dealt with a flood. I know this used to be my great-grandma's house, and it had flooded in 96, um, a little bit in 07, but not as bad as it is now. Um, So we just never, we've been here for the last 10 years, and we never really anticipated it to be this bad. Thana was one of the, Trana was one of the people evacuated to safety with her family. She was since returned to inspect the damage to her late great-grandmother's home. On Friday, flood and gale warnings were in place across many coastal areas in the Pacific Northwest. Members of the National Guard evacuated some residents and filled sandbags to protect properties in Lewis County, Washington. Video emerged showing properties, roads, and fields underwater. The National Weather Service says the flooding across much of southwestern Washington was the worst in over a decade. More heavy rainfall is expected on Tuesday and Wednesday. Video shows officers pulling an injured man out of an aircraft and dragging him away from the crash site. That's just before a train rammed through the wreckage, sending debris across a popular intersection. Warning, this video contains material that some viewers may find disturbing due to its graphic nature. The pilot was hospitalized Sunday following the crash. The plane went down just outside a suburban Los Angeles airfield. The Cessna 172 crashed around 2 p.m. shortly after takeoff. The pilot was the only person on board. He was transported in unknown condition. Nobody on the train was injured and no other injuries were reported despite the flying debris. Officials say Metrolink train service was halted and road traffic was detoured in the area. The Federal Aviation Administration and the National Transportation Safety Board will investigate the accident. Coming up, Washington and Moscow are holding talks over Ukraine. Despite the high stakes, the White House has played down expectations ahead of the meeting. All that and more here on NTD News. You worked hard for your money. You invest in stability. 
for your retirement and your family's future, to build and leave them with something greater. The next unprecedented financial crisis, political misstep, or unstable government can depreciate it all away. It was called the gold standard for a reason, the financial preservation of tomorrow. Diversify your assets against inflation, market volatility, and the unknown with real money. Hedge your wealth with the purest form of money, physical gold and silver. Because any currency printed on paper can be manipulated. What's backing up your IRA? Do what you need to do right now to be prepared with the Reagan Gold Group. Visit now rggusakit.com or call us at 866-912-1384. Receive up to $2,500 in free silver coins and a free safe with your new Precious Metals IRA. Call now. Travel for K Original, Jola Nemdo. The moment your five senses awaken, K Culture. The taste of Jola Nemdo leads to the world, K Food. An exhilarating memory that I will cherish. There's no end to happiness. K Life. A great place to truly enjoy traveling. K Travel, Jola Nemdo. Oh, hey, doesn't it feel like there's communists everywhere? In fact, the Chinese Communist Party has been subverting America from every angle. So whether it's compromising our politicians, controlling Hollywood, manipulating Wall Street, or infiltrating our schools, they have stopped at nothing to take down America. And I believe that in order for us to not become like China, we need citizens who know the truth. So go on over to getepic.com, stay informed with a subscription to the Epic Times, and you will get instant access to this infographic. World tennis number one Novak Djokovic is back in practice hours after winning a court challenge to remain in Australia. He thanked the judge who released him from immigration detention and says he's focusing on his bid for a record 21st Grand Slam win. NTD's Andrew Thomas has more. Djokovic supporters gathered outside a Melbourne court on Monday as a judge ruled that the tennis star be released from immigration detention immediately. I'm saying that this has nothing to do with health nothing to do with sport. It's all to do with control. The totalitarian regime that's been implementing in Victoria and throughout the Australia as well. Judge Anthony Kelly found the government's decision to revoke the tennis star's visa to enter the country to be unreasonable and ordered Djokovic to be freed within 30 minutes and for his passport and other personal documents returned to him. The decision rekindled the world number one's bid to win a record 21st Grand Slam title at the upcoming Australian Open. Serbs in Belgrade also welcomed the decision. It was indeed a political thing, although at the beginning I was a bit angry and mad because he's not vaccinated and because he allowed for all this to happen. But in the end, it all turned out to have been a matter of politics. Djokovic, 34, has been held in an immigration detention hotel alongside long-term asylum seekers since Thursday. The controversy has been closely followed around the world, creating diplomatic tensions between Belgrade and Canberra and sparking heated debate over national vaccination rules. Shame on them. They're probably bothered by the fact that Djokovic will win for the tenth time and that some Serb from small Serbia comes here to win the Australian Open for the tenth time. That's it. But lawyers for the federal government indicated the fight may not be over, telling the court immigration minister Alex Hawk reserved the right to revoke Djokovic's visa again. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. Negotiations are underway today between Washington and Moscow amid concerns of a possible Russian invasion of Ukraine, though the White House said the meeting may yield no major breakthroughs. Top U.S. and Russian diplomats have arrived at the U.S. mission in Geneva, kicking off tense discussions over the Ukraine border crisis. The first meeting was held Sunday between U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman and Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov. The Russian official warned of an early end for the official meeting. I think we won't waste our time tomorrow. He described the preparatory talks as complicated but businesslike in principle. U.S.-Russia relations are reaching their lowest point since the Cold War ended three decades ago. 
Washington is hoping to avoid a new Russian invasion of Ukraine, but Russia took a hard line before the talks. The White House said no breakthroughs were expected and progress depended on de-escalation from Moscow. Secretary of State Antony Blinken again warned that Russia could face massive consequences if it launched an attack. There are two paths uh, before us. There's a path of, of dialogue and diplomacy to try to resolve uh, some of these differences and, and avoid a confrontation. Uh, the other path is, um, is confrontation and massive consequences for Russia if it renews its aggression uh, on Ukraine. The Kremlin has amassed nearly 100,000 troops near Ukraine. The country denies that the action is a plan to invade, citing what it calls provocative behavior from the NATO military alliance and Ukraine. NATO and Russia are due to hold negotiations in Brussels Wednesday. Further talks will follow on Thursday in Vienna. Just ahead, a project aims to help cougars cross from one side of Washington state to the other to find mates. For now, a busy highway is all that separates them. Find out more in just a moment. The Olympic Cougar Project is taking on an ambitious mission to help a group of big cats in Washington state. The effort looks to build highway crossings so the animals can cross over to new areas. Conservationists say it'll boost breeding and improve the wider environment. This adorable cougar kitten will one day grow up to be one of the apex predators in Washington state where a conservation effort is underway to connect the big cats with mates on the other side of the state in the hopes they have litters of their own. Keeping them apart is Interstate 5, a major freeway that cuts across the Olympic Peninsula where cougars have lower genetic diversity than in the rest of Washington state. We know I-5 is a barrier and something needs to be done about it, but we're so early in this process. Glenn Kalish is a habitat connectivity biologist with the Washington Department of Transportation. He's part of the Olympic Cougar Project, which has been tracking, tranquilizing, and fitting cougars with GPS collars to assess where they go and why with the goal of connecting cougar populations on the peninsula to the rest of the state. We're in this information gathering phase and we need to collect information from wildlife cameras and from GPS collars that the Olympic Cougar Project is putting out on dispersing animals like cougars that are going to act as like an umbrella species and then they're going to tell us connectivity needs across I-5 and but the answer is I think in my opinion wildlife crossing structures these wildlife crossing structures are very effective at bridging habitats if they're built effectively if they're built correctly if they're built in ways that species find them attractive and if they're put in areas that species are or tend to move. In Southern California, transit authorities are soon to break ground on a wildlife crossing over U.S. Highway 101 in one of the last remaining areas where there is natural habitat on both sides of the freeway. Seth Riley, a wildlife ecologist with the U.S. National Park Service, says that wildlife crossings also improve the broader ecosystem. I mean, the other thing about mountain lions is they're really the one species that serves that role of being the apex predator. Where, like, they're, they're really the species that is a significant predator on deer, for example. That's the, their main prey, like 90% of the kills that we find are, are deer. And so, you know, we don't know exactly all the things that could happen if we lose mountain lions, say, in the Santa Monica Mountains. But the truth is, that's the only species in that role, and we don't want to do that experiment. <laughs> If one day we don't have mountain lions anymore in this place, I mean, I, you know, I, I think that really will be a sad day. A 32-foot-long sea dragon skeleton has been unearthed in central England. It's claimed to be the largest and most complete fossil of its kind ever found in the UK. Let's take a closer look. The fossil remains found are thought to be 180 million years old. This sea dragon species is known as Ichthyosaurus, a large marine reptile. They first appeared around 250 million years ago and went extinct 90 million years ago. The creature was marked by large eyes and teeth. They were similar in shape to dolphins, but much longer, up to a whopping 80 feet in length. The fossil remains were discovered in Rutland Water Nature Reserve last February. Local conservationist Joe Davies found it during routine drainage of a lagoon for landscaping work. Joe called the discovery the highlight of his career. He said it's fascinating to think 
that the creature once swam in the ocean above him. A team of paleontologists excavated the skeletons in August and September. Back in the 1970s, two additional incomplete smaller specimens were found in the same reservoir. A new study reports a side effect of the restrictive pandemic lockdowns. Sedentary lifestyles have left some people anxious and depressed. Here's Gina Marie, who brings us Strong Mind and Body. Almost everyone has heard the saying that sitting is the new smoking, well a new study may support this. The study shows that it has an impact on depression and anxiety. People have been self-isolating since the COVID-19 outbreak. Many have found themselves sitting for longer periods than ever before. Zoom meetings erased time spent walking to meeting rooms. Netflix took over time that was previously dedicated to the gym. People suddenly became more sedentary during an already highly sedentary society. A team of researchers studied 3,000 participants from all 50 states. Participants were required to self-report how much time they spent doing activities such as sitting, looking at screens and exercising. They also had to record how their behaviours compared to pre-pandemic times. All participants were required to indicate changes to their mental well-being. They were to focus on anxiety, depression, stress and loneliness. Researchers learned that participants shown a decline in their physical activity by 32% on average. These same participants reported more feelings of depression, loneliness and anxiety. A second study was conducted to see whether participants' mental health had changed over time. Researchers found that on average people saw their mental health improve. However, for people whose sitting time stayed high, their depressive symptoms didn't recover. The participants who spend a large amount of time sitting experienced lower rates of mental health improvements. Researchers believe these findings are worthy of more investigation. Researchers recommend people take breaks when sitting for long periods of time. People working from home must get up and move throughout the day. Researchers suggest walking around the block before and after the workday to mimic their pre-pandemic commute. This is believed to benefit people physically and mentally and helps add structure to their day. Thanks for watching. At NTD, we're honored to be your source for the news. Catch us again tonight at 6.30 Eastern. In New York City, I'm Kevin Hogan. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.